Hi everyone, my name is Ivory Jean Bakri. I'm a pharmacist in the Ministry of Health and I'm currently working at the Sarawak Heart Center. Today I'll be sharing um, a little bit on what I've done in my journey as a pharmacist. So I'll be doing some self-introduction. I'll be sharing some skills needed. Uh, should you wish to be a pharmacist in this field, uh, some of the job challenges as well as satisfaction of the, being in this profession, the salary, the expected salary, and also the career progression. Okay, a little bit about myself. How did I decide to be a pharmacist? Um, it was after matriculation where I had to make decision on what I want to pursue. So at that point of time, I listed the option that I had and I weighed the pros and cons of the top three options in my mind. So my top three options at that time were medicine, pharmacy and dentistry and uh, why I chose these three as my uh, top three options is because I was very interested in the medical field. So um, why did I end up with pharmacy? Um, it's because nobody influenced me. Okay, um, there's nobody pressuring me to take pharmacy. In fact, I was um, pressured to take medicine instead. But why did I choose pharmacy instead? It's because of the employability and the market demand. I mean, all three options had the same thing. It is employable and there, were, there was market demand at that time. But what um, made pharmacy appeal more to me was the prospect that being a pharmacist can give you better quality of life as compared to being a doctor or a dentist. So what consultation have I done before pursuing pharmacies? pharmacy? I mean, I do not have the opportunity that you have today and it was very limited. All I had was, um, I don't know, I probably read up about pharmacy through brochures um, from the internet and I did not know any pharmacies uh, personally you know, so that I can approach and ask more about the career opportunities. So count yourself lucky to have this kind of exposure before you decide whether or not pharmacy is for you. So I graduated from University of Malaya with a bachelor in pharmacy. And in 2015, I pursued my postgraduate. Uh, I graduated with a Master in Arts in Health Management Planning and Policy from the University of Leeds in 2016. So I've um, worked in a few places since I've graduated. In 2008 to 2009, um, after I graduated, I worked as a professionally registered pharmacist in the Sarawak General Hospital. It is a training year for all um, pharmacists before they become full-fledged. So it's a year where we get to go to every department in the pharmacy, uh, every department in the, every unit in the pharmacy department in the hospitals uh, for a year. And after I've completed this uh, one year of uh, so training, uh, I was uh, placed in the inpatient pharmacy where I worked from 2009 to 2012, also in Sarawak General Hospital. In 2012, I was transferred to the Sri Aman Divisional Pharmacy Office, where I was made the Divisional Pharmacist. And what I do there is uh, I was the logistic pharmacist. I will talk further on that later. Um, I pursued my postgraduate from 2015 to 2016 and after that I was um, posted to the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency in PJ 
where I was the principal assistant director. In early 2019, I was uh, posted back to Sarawak and I'm now the head of pharmacy resource unit in the Sarawak, Health Cent Sarawak Heart Centre. So let me share a little bit of my experience working in different fields of pharmacy in the Ministry of Health. So I have four years experience so far as a hospital pharmacist. The first um, three years I uh, was being an inpatient pharmacy in Sarawak General Hospital. So what do we do in the inpatient pharmacy? Basically, we supply patients to, we supply medicine to patients in the ward, as well as discharge patients. We also do medication and device counseling to patients uh, who need them. And uh, this can be, this, although this seems routine, but we face day-to-day -day challenge, challenges as well. So I had a good three years working as an inpatient pharmacist in Sarawak General Hospital. And currently I'm working at the Pharmacy Resource Unit in Sarawak General Sarawak Heart Center. What I do there is um, I do this uh, formulary management. Every hospital has a formulary. Formulary is like a catalog of medicines in the hospital. Um, so we have, we manage that. So we see what goes in and out of the formulary. Uh, we also take care of medication safety, as well as inquiries which are drug related or even general inquiries. Uh, we conduct trainings or we coordinate trainings of uh, the pharmacy unit. So that is what um, basically what pharmacy resource unit does in the hospital. Um, my three years in Sri Aman uh, was uh, I work as a logistic pharmacist. So, what actually is a logistic pharmacist? So you see, in the hospital we deal with drugs, but the drugs come from somewhere. So, over here at the screen you can see um, there's a cycle of. Uh, supply chain we call it so we procure supplies and when it arrives at a port we transport them to the warehouse and we receive and do physical checking so the, what what logistic pharmacist uh, role is here is we, we do inventory control and stock management and we indent for supplies as well as we distribute the supplies so only when we distribute the supplies to the hospitals and clinics, the hospital pharmacies or the clinic pharmacies can dispense the patient. So this is a supply chain which um, you can see happening, happening um, in the pharmaceutical line. So what supplies do we deal with? We deal with drugs, obviously, we deal with cold chain items such as your vaccines and reagents, reagents for the lab, medical gases, the oxygens, the uh, nitrous oxide, as well as the non drugs such as um, consumables and medical equipment. Uh, for example, the gloves, the gauze, your BP set, and so forth. So, here are some photos um, of my time in Sri Aman as a logistic pharmacist. We go for supervisory visit here um, and then we check the stock at the clinic. We also go for, uh, yeah, some of the clinics are inaccessible by road, so we go on boats. So, these are um, stuff that I worked with for three years since Sri Aman. Yeah, so um, my two years as a regulatory pharmacist, let me just briefly tell um, the role of National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency or NPRA. It is uh, responsible for ensuring that all pharmaceutical products marketed in Malaysia are of high quality, safe 
and effective. So basically, all those things that are at the shelf in the pharmacy, be it in the government hospital and clinics, or even in uh, the retail pharmacies or the private clinics, that are all should they all should be registered with uh, the Ministry of Health and the agency responsible for that is NPRA. Okay, so besides that, they are to ensure that traditional and cosmetic products approved are safe and of quality. So all the cosmetics, the traditional medicines also have to go through NPRA to get uh, approval to make sure that they, they are safe and of quality for us um, consumers. So there are seven regulatory regulatory components in NPRA. There is registration. Registration is registration of drugs. So we consider we consider approval of um, drugs as registration of drugs, meaning that if it's approved by Ministry of Health, means it's a registered product. A pharmacovigilance is um, something that NPRA does to make sure that the products in the market are continue to be safe. Sometimes, you know, it's safe when at the registration stage, but then after a few years, there are side effects. So we make sure that all the side effects are reported. And that is why we do pharmacovigilance as well as surveillance. Analysis is to make sure that the products are safe um, before we register them. Licensing is um, done for wholesaler, manufacturer, as well as um, importer, so that these are the plants, the manufacturing plants, and the wholesaler are they have the facility that complies with our GMP and our standard practices. We also do education to the public as well as to the industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and R&D. So these are briefly what I've done so far uh, in my 11 years, now 11 years, I've worked for, yeah, 11, 12, almost 12 years. So what skill sets uh, is needed for the current job? Current job meaning um, I would presume where I am now. Uh, so, so yeah, to become a pharmacist in Ministry of Health, you of course need the bachelor degree in pharmacy. A postgraduate qualification is optional actually. Um, it depends on your interests and um, whether or not there is a special field that you are really seriously um, wanting to pursue. But the, the most important thing is your attitude and your behavior when you are at a job. Um, you must always be willing to learn. When you are at the job, there are so many things to learn. There is only so much the university can teach. You learn more by experience, so you must always be open to it, to learn, and not only learn from the seniors. Everybody can teach you something, even your assistant pharmacist. So must we must also be open to changes and opportunity. It was never um, my dream to work as a logistic pharmacist or even a regulatory pharmacist in the first place. I thought I would have to work in a hospital all my life. So these are the changes that I was not comfortable with in the beginning, but I had just kept my mind open and it turned out to be one of the best experience that I could get. And I learned a lot from being you know, being a logistic pharmacist as well as a regulatory regulatory pharmacist. Always be curious and ask questions. There is no stupid questions. You are human. You do not know everything. So if you do not know, ask. Just ask 
and get an answer. It's better to ask and look stupid than to wonder and be stupid forever. Yeah. And um, these are some of the behaviors that I find um, important in the job and basically everywhere you go. Always be respectful. Be respectful to your peers, to your colleagues, to your seniors, also to your subordinates, as well as to your patients and clients, because everybody deserves to be respected. Stay humble, you know, when you climb the stairs of your career, it's easy to not feel grounded, so stay humble because there is always somebody bigger than you. So just remember our humility. Be empathetic is the, the, the other one. Sometimes when we we do our job that is so routine, we forget that patients have feelings. So we have to stop and remember that they have feelings and try to be empathetic. Okay, so some of the challenges that I'm, we face in general as a pharmacist, um, patients and clients lack understanding of what we do. So sometimes, a lot of times actually, um, patients vent out their frustrations at the pharmacy counter because they might think that um, it takes forever for the prescription to be filled. But behind the counter, there are so many things going on. And because of this lack of understanding, we are often misunderstood. So these are some of the challenges. And we are still, we will continue to educate them, to tell them we are not being slow, but we are actually being safe. And we want to make sure that all the medication that reaches them are the correct ones which are safe for them to take. Um, the other challenge is um, work environment. Work environment meaning your colleagues, your boss, and basically just the people around you. So I find that if you have a, you have a good boss, it's really, really easy to work with. No matter what the challenges are, your daily challenges are, if you have a good and supportive boss who builds you, you will be a better person. Working hours can be a challenge for those with family, for those um, who have a partner or our spouse who works outstation. So, um, you know, we sometimes we work after office hours, sometimes we have to do on calls. We work on weekends, so it may be inconvenient for some people, but uh, so far it may be inconvenient, but it is bearable. So that is just some small challenges. In terms of satisfaction, the biggest satisfaction for me personally is um, when we receive appreciation from our patients as well as clients. When I say clients, it means um, it can be nurses or even doctors. Uh, it, yeah, appreci appreciation from colleagues as well. So this, uh, this gives me great satisfaction actually. And also the realization that we play an important role in the health system. So although we are a pharmacist, you may see that a pharmacist's role is just to supply medicine to dispense medicine. But as I mentioned before, we are an important role in the health system. If you look back at a regular a regulatory pharmacist, it is very important that there is a pharmacist in the regulatory because who is going to register the drug so that the drug can be marketed. So we have to remember that every role that a pharmacist play regardless in which area is an important role in the health system. So the summary of the job for myself, I mean, this is my 
personal summary, it is a highly respected profession. Yeah, people really respect us and that itself can be rewarding. There is a broad area of service, so it's not only um, hospital, it's not only retail pharmacies, it's not only what you see normally. There are so many things that a pharmacist can do, like logistic. Those things you do not see, but they require pharmacies there. Those regulatory pharmacies, you don't see them, but they are there and they are important. So we are an important part of the health system. So um, let's talk about salary and career progression. Uh, this is only true for pharmacists in the Ministry of Health. So the starting salary, this does not include allowances. Eh? So the starting salary is 2740. So if you add allowances, it's about 1,000 more than this, so you can roughly get 3,700 somewhere there. Um, based for my 12 years experience as a pharmacist, average current range would be from 5,000 to 11,000. So that is a range that you can expect to see. And um, this is, if you want to know further, it is um, available, it's a document, this schedule for salary is available in the JPA. Uh, you can Google it, it's a Lamperan D JPA form, uh, sorry, Lamperan D JPA document. So the, the, all the salary scale is available there. So in terms of career progression, Pharmacists in the public service, so meaning that pharmacists in the Ministry of Health are all subject to a time-based promotion from UF41 to UF54 over a period of 13 years. So say uh, this year you start at 41, over a period of 13 years, you'll be able to reach 54 because we are all uh, given time-based promotion. However, we must fulfill annual appraisal assessment score of at least 65%. If we do not fulfill this minimal uh, score, then we won't be able to get promoted uh, based on using the time base. So in terms of spe specialization, there are many areas where pharmacists can specialize. Uh, areas of special interest, which includes uh, pharmacotherapy. This is your clinical um, so specialization, so-called specialization uh, in general medicine, in critical care, cardiovascular, renal, emergency care. And these are just to name a few. There is also um, area of interest such as a medication therapy at the clinic. We call it MTEC. And there is um, MTEC for diabetes, MTEC for retroviral disease, MTEC for respiratory, as well as MTEC for anticoagulant. Um, there is also area of special interest for regulatory, as well as um, pharmacoeconomics. So all these you, um, we can, there is a postgraduate degree for it or um, a postgraduate um, certification or special certification which um, a pharmacist can take in order for them to be certified in this field. Uh, there is also something called subject matter expert where a pharmacist is given a special allowance for the specialization that they are in but this is a limited there is a limited space for it a limited slot for it um, in the public service okay. so comes now we come to the question uh, am i happy am i happy where i am now uh, yes i am happy where i am now after 12 years of working um, and why why do I say I'm happy? 
I have to go back to my why. Remember, um, when I first started the presentation, I mentioned why I chose to be a pharmacist, why I chose pharmacy. It was because of the market demand and also the employability as well as the quality of life. No doubt, my quality of life is much better than my friends who may be, you know, doctors. I may not earn as much as them, but at the end of the day, I prefer to have better quality of life. I mean, I'm not saying that they do not have that, but I'm happy where I am now. And um, of course, I'm also happy because I'm given the opportunities that I don't think I would have had before uh, being a hospital pharmacist as well. I, I'm also happy because I know every part, every stage of my career, I learned something new and I'm open to learning something new. So all this is very enriching. It's very rewarding for me. So um, my advice to potential pharmacy students, if you are considering to be a pharmacy student or you're considering pharmacy seriously, I have a few advice for you. Number one is do your own research. Make informed decision based on facts and not opinions. Do not allow yourself to be swayed, to be influenced by opinions of others. Um, maybe I tell you that pharmacy is good Maybe another person said pharmacy is not good. You know, we may be right, we may be wrong, but please make informed decision based on facts. Okay? So if you need um, to hear from people, consult people who have been in the field or in the profession for at least five years. Five years is a safe time. You know, people in the field might tell you, okay, actually, this is good, this is not good. You know, they have, they have worked, they have worked enough, they have experienced enough to tell you whether or not doing pharmacy is a good idea. Okay, picture yourself in the future. Always see yourself five, ten years from now, not next year. So if where do you see yourself five years from now? Where do I see myself five years from now? Always ask yourself that. Because when you ask yourself that, you will know that in five years, a lot of things can change. And you will take into account those possible changes into the decisions that you make today. Okay. So number three is be open to all possibilities and opportunities. All possibilities meaning that even possibility to fail so when you do a decision when you make a decision sometimes not all our decisions are the right decision at that time so those are some of the possibilities that you may face so if you make the wrong decision don't worry there is always opportunity opportunity to make better decisions so be open there is opportunities everywhere okay your path may or will differ from that of your comrades okay the person sitting next to you in front of you behind you are all your friends and five years from now you will all end up somewhere else you'll all, all end up at a different place as in they might take different path in life. So do not compare yourself. My point for number four is do not compare yourself with anybody else. Your fight, your journey is yours. So on your life, do not compare yourself. Encourage one another because at the end of the day, life is not competition. So um, I think this is the end of my presentation and I am happy to accept questions. So uh, thank you very much. Feel free to ask me any questions if you have um, any inquiries about anything in your presentations or even beyond. Thank you.